Let it never be said that I can't admit when I'm wrong. Hello, internet people, and welcome to Flash Theories with Emma, the series where I try to bend your mind into a pretzel using obscure video game lore in five minutes or less. Because I love you guys, and I want to give you more content. Definitely no other reason. Leave now if you don't want spoilers for Star Rail 2.5 and potential upcoming stuff. Seriously, leave right now. Spoilers in three, two, one. One. So in my last video, which I seriously recommend you go watch before continuing here, I proposed a theory that Luo Cha, Diamond, Oswaldo Schneider, and Mr. Yang's former blonde friend Void Archives are all the same person. Just to give a brief explanation, Oswaldo and Void are connected because former nameless, Diamond is connected to Void through this cool gold hand, Luo Cha is connected to Void because, well, look at them, and then Oswaldo and Luo Cha are connected because of a few interesting comments about Luo Cha's true name being a tongue twister, an IPC connection, which also connects him to Diamond, and the fact that Boot Hill seems to have followed him to the Sienja. I spent two weeks of madly scripting and rescripting for that tiny paragraph. Golly. But unfortunately for me, sometimes a really good theory that connects a ton of dots can be unraveled in an instant by a singular piece of counter evidence. For example, a timeline. <laughs> Now, personally, I don't like thinking about how time passes in Star Rail because, frankly, I don't like time. It's annoying, okay? The problem is mostly with Oswaldo Schneider and Void Archives. Now, we don't know exactly when Void Archives boarded the Express. Himiko got the train up and running after who knows how long when she was, like, in high school. And assuming she's one of the few people in this game that ages normally, that can't have been more than, like, 15 years ago, right? Void Archives and Mr. Yang were her first passengers, and the next thing we hear about Void is that he helped get March 7th out of the ice. At least that's the most reasonable assumption in this case. She doesn't seem to remember his name, suspicious, but we don't know of any other Express Nameless during Himiko's time that she could possibly be referring to. So unless this was actually a random memo keeper who helped her get out and then wiped everyone's memory of the incident, except it didn't work on March because she is also a former memo keeper and is resilient to tampering, then yeah, it was probably Void Archives. And since March doesn't seem to remember him that well, he probably left not long after. Now, we don't know exactly how long ago this happened, and they never tell us precisely how old the characters are, but I'd put March's current age somewhere around 20 years old, and when we see her in the ice in her companion quest, she doesn't look that much younger. Assuming that she ages at a normal and not magically or scientifically altered rate, I'd say she's spent less than five years on the Express, probably closer to two or three, meaning that Void Archives left the Express within that time frame. The reason this is an issue is because of a Venturine storyline. He currently appears to be somewhere around 25 years old, and once again, we're assuming that there's no insane time dilation or whatever involved. The destruction of the Avgen, which was Oswaldo's doing, took place when Kakavasha was somewhere between the ages of 8 and 12. You see the problem? Oswaldo and Void Archives' timeline events start to kind of clash a little bit. Now, I fully expect to see the IPC start making moves on the Express, I think they already have, actually. But the idea of an IPC higher-up working remotely from the Astral Express's library is just, um, yeah, that's a bridge too far. So yeah, Void Archives is probably not Oswaldo. There are ways it could potentially work, but they all require way more assumptions and are generally a bit unsatisfying. The main reason I was holding on so tight to that one is because at the time, I couldn't wrap my head around a better way to explain all the pieces that I felt were relevant in a simple and satisfying way. Which, please don't hate on me too much for that. Even even the best theorists are prone to tunnel vision at times, especially when they've had to rewrite the same script four freaking times. And also, this former nameless in the IPC felt like he was being set up to be some kind of big mystery, and frankly, so was Walt's blonde friend, so it makes sense at first glance that the two mysteries would intersect, essentially solving one problem with another. Add on to that the fact that Luo Cha calls himself Lost Traveler or Wanderer almost every time he opens his mouth, the jump to that conclusion didn't feel like much of a jump. But now in hindsight, I really shouldn't have had such a death grip on that assumption. There is more than one former Nameless that's been discussed and thrown around. Some have even been major characters. I actually did go looking to see if I could figure out which former Nameless was Oswaldo. My first thought was that he might be that one guy who blew up the Express into two pieces, but nope. Turns out that was confirmed to be Aha their self, who disguised their self as a Nameless for like a year and then destroyed a planet and half the train upon their exit. <laughs> nice going, clown. Although, Aha is referred to as wielding a rapier at 
one point. Nope, nope, I'm not even gonna touch that. I'm insane enough as it is. I don't need the elation in my brain hole. Moving on. But just because this connection is broken doesn't mean that the rest of them are. Because here's the thing. We may have proof that Oswaldo has been in the IPC for a while now, but we don't have the same for Diamond. It's very possible he's a fairly new face on the IPC scene. And even if we do find some references to Diamond in the future, we have to remember Diamond is a title more than it's a name. Stonehearts can and have been replaced in the past, just ask Aventurine. Given that fact, plus their possible power similarities that we talked about in the initial video, and what appears to be a very direct visual cue with the gold hand, I have no problem still believing that Diamond and Void Archives are one and the same. So where does that leave Lord Cha? Well, let's give a little more explanation on him. I did touch on this in the first video, but definitely not to the extent I should have. So Void Archives. He comes from the Honkai Impact 3rd universe, right? And he got transported to the Star Rail universe somehow. I'm actually surprised no one corrected me on that. It wasn't a portal. He just kind of got stranded in space with Welt and then was suddenly here. Hooray for us. But there are actually other characters from Honkai Impact 3rd in the Star Rail universe. And if you're watching this, I assume I don't have to explain the concept of the multiverse to you guys too much. Honkai Impact 3rd and Star Rail are parallel realities, meaning they're built from the same concepts and people just rearranged in new ways. But it's not always one-to-one. -one. So we have a Branya from the Honkai Impact 3rd reality, and then they took aspects of her character and split her into Bellabog Branya and Silver Wolf. In the same way, we have a Sila and then a Zila variant, and then another Zila variant. Does this make Hanya a Branya variant too? We have a Himiko and a Himiko. I'd be willing to say that Don Hung is Little Welt Joyce, making Don Fung the original Welt Joyce, cloning. Yay. Yan Ching, Su Shang, Kokolia, Pela is Dr. Mei, Ruan Mei is also Dr. Mei. You can see the same thing with Genshin Impact characters too, by the way. It's not every character from Honkai Impact, and it's not every character from Star Rail, but it's a lot of them. All that to say, I think that Luo Chai is Star Rail's variant of Otto Apocalypse. Now, Otto himself is dead, so the reason why Void looks so much like him is because Void is possessing a clone of Otto that originated in the Honkai Impact universe. Do you ever just, like, pause and contemplate the exact sequence of events in your life that led you to saying a specific set of words in a particular order. This is a comment that I got a lot on my last video, and yeah, after thinking it through and letting go of the idea of Luo Cha also being a former nameless, you guys are probably right. And there are a handful of other reasons too. For one, if we try to say that he's Void Archives, the timeline does get a little bit crammed. He has an impressive list of accolades to his name, a bit more than someone who's only been active for three to five years. And speaking of his name, Jing Yuan is actually one of the only people in game right now who knows who Luo Cha actually is. Or must I utter that tongue twister of a name? Now, maybe it's just me, but the first time I heard the name Oswaldo Schneider, I believe my initial reaction was something along the lines of, yep, that's certainly a name. So, all things considered, I have no issue with still saying Luo Cha is Oswaldo. One consistent gripe that I kept getting that I wanted to clear up is that Luo Cha said he was registered with the IPC and with one of the other Sienjo ships as a merchant, as opposed to saying he works for the IPC. And I understand the gripe, but I think taking that and saying he doesn't actually work for the IPC leaves out a very important detail in the situation. <clears throat> he's on an undercover mission, guys. He's not even using his real name. What makes anyone think he's going to be 100% honest about its connections here. If he were to come right out and say, hey, I work for the IPC, he would start getting looked at with a whole lot more scrutiny. However, distancing himself from the IPC completely would mean that he'd have to forgo any privilege or resources that a partnership with the IPC would allow him to draw from. Framing himself as just a contractor, more or less, allows him to say, hey, I have a friend I can call in the IPC, while still letting him also claim that he has no reason to look out for the interests of the IPC as a whole. I know not everyone is going to like that explanation, that's fine. You're free to disagree with me on it, just please be nice. So yeah, in summary, Oswaldo Schneider is Lord Shaw, and Void Archives is Diamond. This is at this point the explanation that explains the most while assuming the least. And personally, I really like the thought of Void and Otto going head to head. Otto used Void Archives as a tool for like centuries in Honkai Impact 3rd, but it led Void to hate Otto and everything he stands for. Gives a little more weight to the Oswaldo and Diamond rivalry, and honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if Void is working to take the IPC down too, since it bears a striking resemblance 
resemblance to the Church of Shiskel, Otto's organization in Honkai Impact 3rd. That would also explain why a certain young Stoneheart was allowed in by the woman who can read minds, no less, even when he has a vendetta against the IPC. But just because Void may have a common goal with some of our favorite characters does not mean he is an ally. Otto was a terrifying villain when you got on his bad side, a trait that seems to have rubbed off on Void. One last little thing I want to make note of is the possibility of a Void Archives variant in Star Rail. Void Archives was made using the Hersher of Reason, allowing him to basically summon anything he could understand at will. And the Hershers appear to also have Star Rail variants, except that they were all reforged into a singular sword which is now wielded by Acheron. No Void Archives. It is possible that something with the same sort of concept of being able to make things at will will show up in the future. The Divine Keys, which Void is, were created by Dr. May in Honkai Impact 3rd, so maybe we'll see Ron May make something similar? Personally, I love the theory that Aventurine's cornerstone is basically the Void Archives of this universe. Obviously, some of the key aspects of Void Archives are missing or altered, but a lot of the visuals are similar at least. And Aventurine himself is an auto variant. That's pretty clear. But yeah, that's pretty much it. If you want to go check out the comments that made me change my theory and even watch the process of me changing my mind happening in real time, I highly suggest you go read through the comments and my replies under the previous video. Thank you guys so much for giving me more information and drawing my attention to things I missed. This is my first time doing this shorter style of theory. Be sure to tell me if you want more like this. A little less organized, a little less punchy, just kind of me spilling information. But I like editing shorter videos, honestly. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and don't worry, the Panacone History Part 2 is still happening before the end of the month. I just wanted to get this out first. Don't forget, I have a Twitch, I have a Twitter, I have a Discord. All the links are in the description for you guys to check out if you want. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I hope you guys have an awesome spooky season. Stay safe. Stay kind.